are visions that only you can see. If you are telling another person a vision that God gave you, the person might think you are mad. But if God has spoken, be rest assured that it will be fulfilled. Madman Moses took a walking stick in his hand, went to Egypt, and with a walking stick in his hand, he was able to bring out two million people. If you had told Moses before he went, Moses, Moses came and met you. Ah, this is what God said I should go and do. You will look at him. How? Are we going to call Ethiopia? Call Babylon? Call Iran? Call all these nations and join forces together so that we can conquer Egypt? Moses said, no. How do you want to conquer Egypt? Just like this. God's ways are not our ways. Are we together? Brother, this is something very simple, yet many of us jump over it. If you will follow God successfully, you must be odd. You must be different. What do you think came over David when a little boy stood before a giant? That even taller people and mightier people saw the giant and ran for their life. David was mad because of something he knew. Everyone that walks with God by revelation, you'll be mad to the world. Everyone that follows the leading of the spirit, you'll be mad to the carnal people. What is the essence of this message this morning? You cannot be in between. Is either you as a child of God, is either you are mad or you are compromising. Are we together? Is either you are truly making a difference or you are moving with the world unknown to you. The purpose of this is so that we could check ourselves and know whether truly by my lifestyle am I making a difference? Am I standing out away from the world? Brethren, there's one madman I know. A very, very madman by the name of Pastor Moses. Daddy, we do respect, sir. Uh, I will tell you, it's very mad, though. Several of us were here on Friday night. How many of us were here on Friday? You heard when he was telling us a story of his own closest friend. That the first guy we drive, he bought it for him. Whatever the man is, a retired general, it was by his own doing. And then, when things were tough for him, this same man blasted him, looked down on him. One day, he called him and the man shouted on him. And he said, on the phone, instantly, tears began to drop from his eyes. Now, see where the madness comes in. Then God told him that they will switch positions. Brethren, let's be very, very frank. As a normal man, there's a way somebody will treat you when things change. Not because you want to weaken that person, no. At most, you will be cut off from that person. But do you know where I'm going? Today, he is the one sustaining the same person. He did not even call him, oh boy, you remember what you did to me that time? Can you see what it means to follow Jesus? He said, if, you will, if men should slap you on the right cheek, you should do what? Only a madman can do that. Only a madman can do that. That you will slap me on the right cheek. Myself, illuminate Jesus David. And I'll say, <laughs> I decrease, but that's what God wants. God wants us to be mad. Apart from that, one Wednesday morning, tractors, bulldozers, came to Bride Assembly in Jesha and scattered the whole church. Then a mad pastor and mad church members came and they started clearing, clearing, clearing. Then on Friday night, this mad pastor and mad church members that they just scattered 18 plot of land, they started having open air crusade. What is wrong with these people? They are mad. As if that were not enough, the next week was December camp. Pastor Moses, they just scatter your church. And so what? No. 
They did not scatter the church. They scattered the building. The church is the people. The building is not the church. Ah, Pastor Moses, what is wrong with you? All your labor for the past how many years? No, that is not my labor. My labor is in preaching the gospel and souls are being won. Brethren, especially we ministers, let us learn. The first thing a man of God does when he starts, when he starts to pastor is the structure, the mega structure, the church. It is the achievement of many pastors. We now have our own sites. We now have our own land. That's the achievement of many pastors. But you see a mad pastor. They scattered his church. Service continues. Now, as if that were not enough, see where the madness is. See where the madness is. This was December 2012. Then May 1st, 2013. Church that is looking for money. Church that should be saying, what do we do? Do we live here and go and look for land somewhere else? May 1st, 2013. Instead of them to concentrate on, let's build church now. They say no. They launched a 24-hour TV station. I can tell you this. It is not normal. All members, you were here on that canopy. Rain was beating you. Rain was beating you on a Sunday service. Those days, if you wear fine clothes, come church. Sorry. <laughs> because you will be drenched in water. Then you will leave praise and worship. No, you won't even leave it. Why they are dancing, why they are singing. People are packing water, rejoicing. Mad church members. With a mad pastor. Simply because somebody has a revelation that the gospel should not be hindered by a church building. His duty is to preach the gospel, not to build a structure. Because somebody has a revelation that the people are the church, not this building. Then seven years after, see where we are today. Brethren, it pays to be mad for God. I can talk about him very well because he's a father to me and I learned so much from him. I've been working with him for a few years now. I know the sacrifices that this man makes. Apostle Paul said we preach not ourselves but Jesus Christ and ourselves his servant for your sake. Let me tell you something. Another reason why this man is mad is because of the stand he's taking. In the end time message, the number one enemy today is Brother Moses. You people have seen him as a pastor. Outside, they are seeing him as Antichrist. Outside, they are seeing him as Antichrist, son of Satan. The very, if Antichrist is no more from Rome, he's from Bible Assembly Church. His name is Moses Alu. Why? You are saying that Brother Abraham died with the gifts. You are saying that God is no more speaking in his church. You are saying that revelation has ended. You are saying that in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when it will begin to sound, all the mysteries of God should be finished. And a man that is studying his Bible, who is interested in pleasing God and not in pleasing man, said to look, God takes his servants, but his work continues. He takes his workmen, but his work continues. Ah, the Bible says the part of the just is as a light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. Yes, but Abraham died in 1965, but the bride of Christ is still here. Are you saying Brother Abraham died with the Holy Ghost? If Brother Abraham has died, the Holy Ghost is still in the church. He will continue to speak. He will continue to walk. He will continue to reveal things in his scripture. For this sake, we now have an international madman in Brother Moses. You don't know the, the, the association. The people he has lost as friends simply because of this stand. A man will stand up and tell you, Brother Abraham brought nothing new. To a normal mental message believer, that man is mad. Brother Abraham did not bring anything new. Brother, you are mad. Brother, you are mad. Brother Abraham did not bring anything new. But he is talking by revelation. Revelation indeed will make you mad. 
Why am I saying this? There are so many more things I could say, even about him alone. He's still living in a rented apartment in Lagos. And over 600 million naira has been spent on Bright TV airtime alone. Eh? Pastor, 21st century. Pastor, if you like say, we go go do prophetic action on top pastor. The way I'm seeing it, if you like say that they do pastor from Akwanga. Brazil, are you confirming it? Because why has he not built a house for himself? It's like powers from Akwanga are following pastor. Eh? Okay, he is mad. Oh, he is mad. Church, put your hands together for the Lord. If you are not mad, it simply means you are moving with the world. You are a beautiful sister. You choose to dress modestly. See, nobody say if you wear trousers or, or shawarma or skimpy dress. Nobody say you not get past them. Nobody say if you move, men not go turn their head. Nobody say if you put that thing on. People start falling under anointing anytime they see you. Or they'll start whistling. <laughs> but why? You choose to make a difference. You choose to be mad. A daughter of God knows that the woman is the most beautiful creature that God has. A daughter of God. See, man, God created man. He said he formed man from the dust of the ground. But when it comes to woman, the language there, he designed the woman. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. That scripture is more for women. Now, this is the, this is the thing. A daughter of God that chooses to be mad identifies that and knows that that gift called beauty simply because I'm a woman. If he gets into the hand of Satan, it will cause more havoc. So what will I do? I will keep and cover myself as a daughter of God. You are making a difference. Stop moving with the world, sisters. Enough is enough of our sisters opening their breasts for, for, for a man to see a little peak. Enough is enough of you wearing the tight thing so that all your, your shape and bumper will be seen. It is not for Christian sisters. Enough is enough of wearing short skirts and tight clothes. Be mad. Be mad. Make a difference. Make a difference. You don't need any man to tell you you are beautiful. The main virtue of being a woman, it connotes beauty. Make a difference. Don't be like the world. Let them see you in your working place, in your business place, in your school, and let them know that you are truly mad. If everybody is going this way, I will go this way. Brothers, what about us? Let's be mad. Brothers in Ladipo Markets, brothers in Aspanda, brothers on Lagos Island selling goods. Let's be mad. Don't change the label of the product and call it Germany when it is China. Be mad. Don't say it is Italian shoe when you know it is from Abba. Be mad. Eh? Don't give warranty of two years when you know that you can only be sure of three months. Be sincere. Let me show you an example of mad men in the Bible. The three Hebrew boys a king called Nebuchadnezzar that had the power to throw them into fire, erected an image, and they came out one morning and said, everybody, this is the commandment of the king. If you don't bow to this image, I will kill you. As soon as they heard the music, nobody remembered the God they are serving. Everybody started bowing to the image. But there were three mad men. They stood it's like the, the madness that was worrying them. It don't tell for their body. No be new madness. They stood. Because when they were brought before the king, the king could not imagine it. What is going on? I gave an order. And you are mad enough not to bow to the image. Okay, another chance. If the music plays and you don't bow, eat the fire seven times more. These mad men, for you to know that they are seriously disturbed by madness. They say, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, oh, God, take your time, oh. Take your time. I'm not, I know they look face for this matter. I know look face. I know they look with your face. Nebuchadnezzar, take your time. I don't have, you see, I'm not bowing to your image. What an insult. Are you mad? And Nebuchadnezzar did what he could do. Ah! The Bible says, do, do not be afraid of them that can only hurt the body, but cannot hurt the soul. 
Nebuchadnezzar did what he could do. He threw them into the fire. You may lose your job because you don't want to open your laps for a useless man in your office. You may lose your job because you choose to be mad. You may suffer loss in your business because you choose to be mad. But enter the fire first and see whether there will not be a fourth man in the fire. He says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They loved not their lives unto the dead. Until you have that mindset that I am mad for Jesus, do your worst. Do your worst. Is it fire? He said, see what they said. They said, our God is able. Yes. My God is able to make all the customers that come to this market. He's able to make them to come to me that is telling the truth that the product is China. He's able. But even if he doesn't, that's the madness. That is where the madness comes in. If you know that God will give you back in return, it's simple now. It's very simple. Ah, it, in fact, you start advertising. Number one product from China, this shop, this shop. Because you know that God will bring out the customers. But the madness is, even if he doesn't, we are not going to bow. Even if God does not prosper my business, I will not lie. Are you mad? Are you willing to be that mad? Even if my business suffers loss because I am saying the truth for Christ's sake, I will remain mad. Are you ready? Even if I lose that job, I will be different. Are you ready? And they did it. They were thrown into the fire. But what did God do? God has never called a man to useless his life. Did you hear that? God has never called a man to useless his life. Things might be tough for you, but continue being mad for God. There is a beautiful end. Are we together? I remember how I had so much pressure to leave this church too. There's one brother that I saw his comment on Facebook some time back. I could remember years back how he was saying no manner of evil things against the church and the pastor. To get me to leave. To get me to leave. The funny thing is, he's one of those that will tell you I, we were those that started from Antonio Bay. You know? They are, they, they are the elders in Bright Assembly. They will tell you that those that started from 19 Abraham when the church started. Why should I leave the church? No reason. Has the word of God been misplaced in the church? No. The gifts of the Spirit, are they no longer manifesting in the church? No. So what is your problem? Why should I leave the church? Eh, Pastor Moses this. Eh, Pastor Moses that. The worst one they will say is, Bride Assembly does not have love. Eh. The church is not a museum for saints. It is a hospital for sinners. Leave us. We don't have love. Leave us. God is working on us. I chose to be mad. My prayer group, Brandon Dubis, we belong to the same prayer group. Many of our group members are destined in this church. Many of those that will go to mountain together and clap, are destined here. I chose to be different, to follow the light that God has shown me. If anybody had told me 10 years ago, look me there, I see you being an assistant pastor in the church. I'll say, okay, keep it to yourself. But can you see the reward of being different? Can you see the reward of being different? Why am I saying this? Be mad first. Take a stand for God first. Let people know in that market, there is a Christian. No, there is a mad man that is always telling the truth. Let people know that there is a mad woman that is never immoral. Let people know that there is a mad man, a mad woman that has integrity. Whether you make the money fast or not, be mad first. God, the Bible, the Lord Jesus said, they asked him, we are forsaking all and followed you. He said, not only in the life to come, but even in this life, there is a reward. Brethren, we can go on and on and keep talking. We must be mad. That is the simple message to us this afternoon. If you are not mad, you are only compromising. You must make a difference. He says in John 3, 8, that as 
as you cannot tell where the wind blow it. The wind blows where it listens. You hear the sound, but you cannot tell where it's coming or where it's going. He says what? So is everyone that is mad, that is born of the Spirit. Sorry. Are we together? Our lives must be unique. We must be peculiar. We must stand out. We must be making a difference. So wherever you are, he said you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. God is not looking for you to shout fire, fire in that market or in that society where you are. He's not looking for you to, when they say anything, say yes, only goes fire, no. He's looking for you to stand out first with your life. Brethren, are you mad? Except a man be mad, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. If you are mad, can you jump on your feet and shout hallelujah? Except a man be mad, he cannot enter the kingdom of God.